Welcome to another one of my videos on the topic of management science, where we utilize Microsoft Excel to model and then solve simple everyday business problems. Now my two usual caveats before we get going in the actual problem. Number one, if you are watching this video on YouTube, please refer to the description below the video and there you will find a link to the corresponding blog post for this problem. On the blog post, I have the problem written out long form, and most importantly, you will find a link to download this very spreadsheet, so you can follow right along with me, step by step. Number two, I have gone ahead and built certain features into this spreadsheet. Most notably, what I've done is I've gone ahead and named certain cell regions with unique names that will help us in formulas and in our solver at the end. So just for a quick example, if I were to go to the net flow column and highlight that column, the purple cells, if you look in the top left of our spreadsheet, you will see it actually says net flow. And again, that's just because I selected those cells um, before this video and I used the define name feature in Excel to give that region of cells a unique name. So what problem do we have here? Well, it's actually, in a way, kind of humorous. We have an establishment that is sort of the center of town entertainment, and it is called the Dance Barn. And they have music and, I'm sure, karaoke, and the fact that they serve drinks probably contributes, but they have outside volleyball. They have all kinds of things going on. Most of the time, it's, it's okay, but on occasion things can get a little bit out of hand at the dance barn. So far out of hand that they actually have to call the police to come and maybe break up an altercation or, you know, something like that. The police in town, they are so professional and so well known that they are actually called the super troopers. And when the dance barn needs help, they call the police station and the super troopers are dispatched out to the dance barn. Now, as city managers, we are tasked with finding the shortest route from the police station out to the dance barn. It's not a straight one-way or one-road shot from station to dance barn. To get there, the police will have to go through a series of intersections. Now, the distance between each intersection is different. So what we end up having is a modest network of roads and intersections that create many unique paths for getting out to the dance barn. So it's going to be our job as city managers to take that data, which is the distance between all the intersections, and then use Excel to figure out the shortest distance from the station to the dance barn when things get a little bit out of hand. Now, like all the problems of this type I've done, we're going to continue with the practice of actually drawing out the road network so we can actually see the paths that the super troopers may consider when they're going from the station out to the dance barn. So we'll go ahead and take a few minutes now to draw out our network, the links that connect the intersections, and then once we do that, we'll come back into Excel and find our shortest route. So here is our diagram for our Super Troopers minimum distance problem. Now a few things about the map itself before we go ahead and start labeling it. You will notice that the police station where Super Troopers are headquartered is over on the left hand side where the green circle is. And the dance barn, which is their frequent destination, is in the red circle on the right. All of the yellow nodes in the middle you can think of as intersections. So once the super troopers come to an intersection, they will have choices to make on which direction to go. And of course, our job is going to be to find the shortest distance through this network of intersections. A couple more things that are important to note about this diagram. The nodes in this diagram are not geographically proportionate. So the nodes in this diagram are spread out evenly as they're drawn. However, in real life, the roads from node to node are not this uh, uniform. 
So in real life, the roads can be curvy and circle way around and come back, or they could be uh, straight shots over. So do not take this map of nodes to be actually how it would look on a map itself. Now, since these are roads, technically travel is allowed in both directions. So instead of arcs, we will be using links. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that by the looks of this, the dance barn is east of the Super Trooper station. Now, in real life, that may or not be true. So again, this is just a diagram that summarizes all of our distances and decision points. Do not take it to be an actual representation of how it would look in an actual atlas or map. Now, like any other network problem, we're going to have to draw in our links from node to node so we know exactly which paths are possible. So again, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. I will draw in those links and then I will restart it and we'll talk about what we have. So here is our map with our links drawn in. Remember I said that links mean that travel can occur in both directions. So there are actually more node pairs in terms of travel than there are green links drawn on the map. Now of course the links do not mean much without distances. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again. I will draw in the distance between each node and then we'll come back and take a look at that. So here is our map with our distances drawn in. Now if this looks complex to you, that's because it is. And here's what I mean by that. If we were to go from station to B, and then we could choose A, D, E, or C, and let's say we chose E. Well, from E, we could go to C, we could go to D, we could go to G, we could go to H. Now, even though we can travel both directions on our roads, there is one move we cannot make, and that is going from a node to another node and then back to the first node. So that's kind of like getting off the interstate, going the wrong direction, realizing you went the wrong way, so you turn around and go back to the interstate. Even though you drove that extra distance, it really didn't take you anywhere new. So here's how it would play out in our problem. We can go from A to B and B to A, but it would have to go something like this. We could go from the station to A to B, or we could go from the station to B to A. Now that's using both directions of the A to B route, but in a different way. What we cannot do is go from the station to B and then from B back to the station because that's where we just were. And that would be completely unnecessary travel because we ended up right where we started. So the ability to go back to the node you were just at does not count. And if you look on our list of nodes over there on the left hand side, you will see that. So you will see that we can go from police station to C, but there is no C to police station because that is a roundabout move that takes you back right where you started. Now we can go, like I said, from A to B and B to A, but it depends on how you are going through that route and where you were before. So just keep in mind that even though we can travel on both sides of the road, the one thing we cannot do is start at a node, go to the next node, and then turn around and go back right where we started. As you, you can begin to see, the number of unique routes or the number of unique total paths through our road network, even for one this small, are numerous. There are many, many unique routes through this network that lead from the station to the dance barn. Now, luckily, we're going to be using Excel to do that heavy lifting for us. But out of all those unique routes, out of all those unique paths, there is one that is the minimum distance. And that's what we're going to have Excel find. Now, a few things that I have written in the original problem on the blog, and that is that we are sort of controlling for certain variables. So the dance barn mainly gets out of hand in the nighttime. There are no traffic concerns at any nodes. 
Also, the road types are the same, so the response time per hour or the basic, the basic speed in miles per hour are the same for each route. Now, in real life, that wouldn't necessarily be the case, but since we're kind of out away from large cities, we're going to, going to assume that the speed that the super troopers could attain on any route is the same. So, given that we are controlling for traffic, and we are controlling for a constant speed between nodes. Let's go ahead and go back into Excel and have Excel find for us the shortest distance from the Super Trooper station to the dance barn. Okay, so here we are back in Excel. Now, as you saw in the diagram, even with a modest number of intersections, this problem is already pretty complex. Now imagine if you are an airline and you have a central sort of hub and then you have different destinations you fly to and you want to find the shortest distance, you know, from city to city in order to save cost on fuel and things like that. You can imagine how complex that network would be. But for this example, we're just going to stick with the super troopers and the dance barn. Let's take a look at our spreadsheet and talk about what each part of it is going to do for us. Let's start over on the right. You will see we have our nodes listed. So from the police station, through all the intersections, A through H, and then the dance barn, which is our destination. Now over on the far right, you will see a supply demand column. And if you notice, the police station, the supply is 1. Now in this problem, all the one means is that we are supplying the police force into the network. So we're actually departing the police station, we are supplying the network with the police force, with the super troopers. All of the intersections have a supply demand of zero, and that's because the police are just passing through that intersection, they aren't stopping. So it's just like a shipment node where a product comes in, is distributed, and all goes out. So our intersections are like transshipment nodes in our previous problem. The dance barn is negative one because they are actually demanding or taking in the super troopers from the network. So the one and negative one are just police departing and police arriving. Police being supplied to the network and police being demanded from the network. Now over on the left, we have our from and to. And these are all of our links. So these are all of our node pairs in our problem. Now remember I said that some nodes you can go both directions on and some you can't. If you look down to that list, I'm not going to point all those out right now, but the most obvious are the police station to the first node. If you do a U-turn and go back to, to the police station, you haven't gone anywhere. So there is no node back to the police station. Now over on the right-hand side, in the salmon color column, that is simply the distance in miles of each path. So from the police station to intersection A is three miles, from the police station to intersection B is six miles, and so on and so forth. Now the blue column down the middle on route, that's actually what Excel is going to find for us. And what it's going to do, what we're going to tell Excel to do, is if we are to take that route, if we are to assign the super troopers to that link, to that route, it will put a one there. If not, it will put a zero. So that column will be zeros and ones, ones representing a link or a path we should take in order to minimize the total distance. And finally down below, you will see a pink, pinkish red box, and that is actually our total distance. So once Excel figures out which paths or which links add up to our shortest distance, it will then add those together and put them in the total distance box there at the bottom. And that will be our final answer. Now to solve this problem, we only have to input two formulas. And they are very similar, if not exactly the same, as formulas I have used in previous problems. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on what they do, but if you want to find that out, please refer to one of my previous videos where I use these formulas uh, repeatedly. So we're going to start at the top of the net flow column. So right next to police station and the top of net flow, that's going to be our first formula. 
Now the formula we enter there will be a sum if. So it's a conditional summation formula. And it looks like this. So equals sum if. And if you look, it asks us for a range, a criteria, and then a sum range. So our range is going to be from, and if you notice, it highlights the from column in a blue outline. In that column, we want it to look for the term police station, which in our spreadsheet is H4. Comma. And then our sum range is on route. Close parentheses. We are telling Excel to go to the from column, find out where it says police station, and then wherever it says police station, in the corresponding cells on route in the blue column, we're going to sum those up. Okay, now once we do the entire spreadsheet, it will be much more obvious how this formula works, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and continue. Now this has a second half, sum if, our range is 2, comma, criteria H4, comma, on root again. And that's because each cell in net flow is a net amount. So we have to have some sort of subtraction going in there, otherwise it's not really a net amount. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. Now of course we don't have any values in the on route column yet because that's what Excel is going to find for us. So all the values in net flow for now will be zero. So all we need to do here is just drag all the way down this column and that will change the criteria to H5 and H6 and H7 and so forth. So that's our first formula. We're done with that. Now the second formula we have is actually in the total distance cell at the very bottom. And this is the sum product formula I've used many times in previous videos. So this is equals sum product. And again this multiplies and adds to corresponding cell arrays if we choose a path, what do we have to multiply that path by to get a distance? Well, we have to multiply it by the distance. So for example, if Excel puts a 1 in the path from police station to intersection B, if we have a 1 in on route, then we'll have 1 times 6, and that will be the 6th distance for that path. Then if we go down and have a 1 in another path, We'll take that 1 times that distance and then add those together and then so on and so forth. So this formula just adds, multiplies and adds two corresponding arrays of cells. So we're doing sum product on root, comma, and then of course distance. And we'll hit enter. And again, that is zero because we do not have any values in the on root column. Okay, so believe it or not, we are ready to go ahead and open up the solver and find the solution to our problem. So we'll go to data and then open the solver on the right hand side. Now if you've done some of my previous videos, you pretty much know how this works, so I'll go ahead and go pretty quickly. Our objective is to minimize our total distance. So set objective is total distance. That's what we named that pinkish cell at the bottom. We will select the radio button for minimize, the MIN, by changing the variable cells on root. That is the blue column down the middle of our spreadsheet. So we're actually asking Excel to find the values for that blue column. Now in this problem, we only have really one constraint. So we'll go ahead and click Add. And that is that our net flow must equal our supply demand. Again, and that's just telling Excel that our intersections have to remain zero, our police station has to have a supply of one, and then the dance barn will have a demand of negative one. So we'll go ahead and click OK. 
So we'll double check to make sure the make unconstrained variables non-negative is checked. So it is. Our solving method is simplex LP, LP for simplex linear programming. If we have everything spelled correctly, it looks like we do. We'll go ahead and click solve. And solver says it did find a solution, which is good. All constraints have been satisfied. And we yes, we do want to keep the solver solution. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Let's look at what we have here. If you notice on our purple column of net flow, that column matches the blue column to the right. So our net flow is equal to our supply demand, which was a constraint in our problem. And then the interesting column, of course, is the blue column. If you look at the on root column, we have ones and zeros. Again, if there's a one there, that is the route we should take. If we have a zero there, we're going to ignore that route. So what Excel is telling us is that through our network diagram we drew, we need to go from police station to intersection A, then we'll jump down, then we have to go from intersection A to intersection B, and we'll keep going down further, then we go from intersection B to intersection E, go down, we'll go from intersection E to intersection F, and then finally we go from intersection F to the dance barn. And of course we go from police station to dance barn, and the minimum possible distance we can do that in is 19 miles, and you will find that in the total distance box there at the bottom. Now oftentimes people think that, well, why don't I just you know, take the shortest route at each node. And that would seem to make, you know, intuitive sense. But what happens is sometimes taking the shortest route from your current node to the next node will put you in a place of very long distances from that next node. So the shortest path leading out of each intersection is not necessarily the shortest route because it's the overall combination of distances along a route that make it the shortest or not. For the super troopers to get to the dance barn in the shortest distance possible, they have to leave the police station, go to intersection A. At intersection A, they had to go to intersection B. From B, they go to intersection E. From intersection E, they go to intersection F. And from intersection F, they go to the dance barn. And that is how we keep an eye on all those crazy people out at the dance barn.